Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Dwayne Pfeiffer, and I was employed in Iraq in the year 2002 with 2-6 Caravan in Ilisham, Germany, with parts of the Element of Third Infantry Division out of Fort Stewart, Georgia. Um, speak briefly on my job, I was employed with aviation, with an aviation unit of 2-6, which specialized in Apache helicopters, which are now longbows, along with elements of Third ID, with shock and all deployment the first wave that went into Iraq. And I would like to speak briefly about non-combat veterans and their issue and their place in this war. As my, as my fellow brother said earlier, um, you have non-combat veterans and combat veterans. And I want to leave you, if I don't leave you with anything else, I want to leave you with this. I want you to sit down and I want you to ask yourself, what does it truly take to kill someone? You have to squeeze your trigger on your rifle to kill someone. Or can you just sign a document? Can you radio personnel? Can you detail maps? Can you work with intel and intelligence? What does it truly take to kill someone? Now, given one act is not as gruesome as another, but it is equally as tactic, it is systematic, and you feel the same way after it's all said and done. Um, after I got back um, in 2003, I went to Fort Drum. Your mother sees it. Your father sees it. Your sisters and your brother see it. You begin to do things which are formed from this anger that you weren't able to do overseas. And it turns you into a person that you can't even recognize when you look in the mirror. Um, I want to talk a little bit as well as about the connection between human being to human being. I think that this is the issue that we need to address as a nation, as a people, and as an entire globe. I believe in the basic goodness of human beings. Not everybody does, but I do. And I believe that this connection is undermined in our daily activities, in the ways that we entertain ourselves, especially as Americans, in the way that we glorify work. War has become something that we glorify. We glorify death. We do it through our music. We do it through our movies. We do it through our entertainment, our video games. You guys know what I'm talking about. You see it every day. And I think that this is something that we need to address because it leads to more violence. Our children are faster and faster becoming desensitized to war. Our children are seeing this. It's a cool thing now. Back in the days, it was cool to fight. You know, you, go, you take somebody out in the yard, you throw up your dudes, you know, but you live to fight another day. Now it's guns. Guns are the cool thing. Bullets are the cool thing. Blood is the cool thing. And this is what we promote. And I've seen this. And as a soldier, you can't really appreciate it until you come home. Because as a soldier, you're only allowed one mindset to protect yourself and the lives of your brothers and the lives of your sisters that are in arms with you. That is it. There is nothing else. But when you come back and you have a, you have time to sit back and reflect on what you've done, I mean, it just, it really tears you apart. It really does. Let me tell you that right now. Um, I regret my participation in this war. I didn't think it was just when I first went in, to be totally honest with you. And that position was actually confirmed by my senior non-commissioned officer, whose name I won't mention. But he told me, hey, Fife which is what they call me Fife, you know, military <coughs> nicknames. Hey Fife, you're young, you know? So I'm not gonna lie to you, and I'm so glad that he didn't because he actually better prepared us for what we were about to do than lying to us. When you get back, I want you to sit down and I want you to research every aspect of this war, every single one, and I want you to decide for yourself whether you thought it was just or not. I had a feeling within my gut that I wasn't right as soon as I got there. And he even, he even admitted to me as a senior non-commissioned officer, that he felt bad that he had to tell me that. But he couldn't bring himself to lie to me, and I'll always be grateful to him for that. Um, I also want to talk to you about the stain that this leaves on us and our moral injuries as individuals. Um, when you do things as a soldier and you come back, <coughs> There's nothing really that you can do by yourself that will fix it. Which is why places like this are so necessary. So necessary. 
without the soul repair center that started today, we won't be able to spread the word and take it out to other people so that they can realize that they need to take it to their locations, to their families. It has to start somewhere. These issues have to be talked about. Um, if you're not surrounded by a positive circle, especially a positive group of people, veterans who come back are going to continue to be homeless. You all know the figures on that. They're going to continue to commit suicides. You all know the figures on that. And this is a recycled thing that's just going to keep happening and happening and happening and happening and happening. It's conditioning people. We are programming each other to kill each other. Prime example, Dr. Forbes, Reverend Forbes, beautiful speaker. As soon as he fell down, how many service members did you see just jump up just like that and run straight to the front? This is conditioning, people. It's training. It's not something you let go. It's not something you turn off. It's a part of your identity. And you can't turn it off. Now, you can subside it with love and prayers and hope and counseling. But if you do not talk about this, I mean truly in depth talk about this, and get family members and friends to see the same thing, we're just, we're just creating more problems for future generations to come. That's all I have to say. Thank you.